Well, thanks, Thomas. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I've really been looking forward to this event for a very, very long time. As many of you know, we went through a comprehensive strategic planning process over the last few years. And one of the recommendations that we came to as a community um, was to prioritize sports and entertainment uh, as a distinctive area for Anderson. And really our goal in, in the area of sports leadership and management is to be the number one uh, program in the world. And we believe we have all the assets to do that. Uh, we're in LA, uh, an epicenter of sports worldwide. Uh, we have an extraordinary uh, athletics department that has a long heritage of iconic uh, coaches and athletes. We have um, the Center for uh, Media and Entertainment and Sports, uh, which has done tremendous work over the years and led by Sanjay Sood, Jay Tucker, and Eric Johnson. Uh, we have uh, great global uh, partners, including Real Madrid and local partners, uh, LA20, uh, LA28. Uh, so we believe we have all the pieces uh, to be absolutely world-class in sports leadership and management. And you'll hear more from uh, the, uh, our, our special guests in just a moment, but I wanted to share with you some of the plans we have around sports leadership and management. And, and they include both graduate and undergraduate courses, a specialization in sports management for our MBA students, and a minor uh, in sports management for our undergraduate students. We'll also be hosting a wide range of speakers and events that'll bring the sports community together and create access uh, to our students. And the program will support faculty research, including a white paper series that will uh, address current issues in the sports in uh, industry. There's really no doubt in my mind that this will differentiate Anderson and establish us as a clear leader in the sports industry. And our two guests today are, are critical to this goal and they couldn't be better partners. Andy and Martin, thanks so much for being here. So why don't we get started? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, let's start by talking a bit about why we zeroed in on the sports industry. Andy, can you tell us about the size of the industry and the, and the outlook for its growth? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, to give to to give you your proper credit for what how this came to fruition, about two or three years ago, um, Tony commissioned a, a member of the board of advisors for the Anderson School and a team to evaluate how could the Anderson School in particular achieve that same kind of elite status that Martin, when he came in, put the stake in the ground and said, you know, you want that on the athletics front. And, and one of the things that was highlighted in the work was that the elite business schools are, are often known for being elite in a specific field. So, you know, at Nike, we don't, we don't, we don't say the other brands' names, but I'll, so I won't say the other brands' names, but there's a school that's known for finance and there's one that's known for marketing. And there's some that there's one out there that's known for entrepreneurialism. Maybe you might have a kid that spent some time on that campus, but, um, uh, but, you know, UCLA in a way was so great at everything that to your word, differentiation and distinction, it wasn't really differentiated or distinctive with respect to a single thing. So if you think about, you know, the undergraduate having so many amazing disciplines and the business school covering so much ground and the, and the board and Tony researched um, what areas could UCLA become distinctive in UCLA Anderson. And some of the ideas were healthcare, ethics, D and I all really important dimensions of business. Um, and we got into a discussion about the massive industry of sports and I would say there are a couple of elements of sports that you, you'd kind of say, well, in hindsight, isn't that obvious? And, and it's, one of the issues is sports is massive. If you define it, and I'll explain how I define it in a second, um, it's over a trillion dollar industry easily. Um, at the same time, you can love music and be a major in music or have a minor in music. You could um, love you know, Turkish history. I took some Turkish history classes at UCLA's undergrad and major in certain dimensions of history or language um, um, or art, certainly fine arts. But sports has never really been considered like an academic pursuit. Um, and it's becoming that. But no one's really put a stake in the ground and become a leader in the business of sport or sports as an academic, I guess, you know, uh, concept. And so 
Um, when you think about the ecosystem of sport, part of that's because people think athletes. Well, I think athletes are at the center. Athletes that play professionally, amateur, youth, all the athletes in this room, we have a saying at Nike, if you have a body, you're an athlete. Everybody wants to get healthier and more fit. If you put them at the center and start to say what industries are connected to athletes, certainly teams, leagues, and then if you're a team, you have venues, media, so you have you know everything from live sports to unscripted content, interactive games, betting, merchandise. I happen to be I happen to work for a company that has fifty billion dollars in revenue, and we think we might be the leading brand in sports. And we make shoes and clothes, and we don't actually own a team or or any athletes. And and you go to technology and health and fitness, and so it's really a massive industry. A lot of it is private, or a lot of it's a crown jewel, like ESPN's a crown jewel within Disney. I think Bob Iger said, sports stands tallest in media. Um, And so that was really the impetus for it. And then I just say on a personal front, I'd say a few years ago, I I started to kind of think about, you know, what did I really care about? And Shelby and I, my wife and I talked about it. And I thought, you know, start with your kids. we've, We've been obsessed with give them the education, the get them engaged in sport and help them get the kind of financial opportunity that they need to live their best possible life. And um, we realized our kids are going to be okay. And we started to think, you know, education, sports and opportunity, there's no better place to try to, to scale that than a university and a campus um, and specifically UCLA. And, and I'd say back to your point about, could we be the number one? I had, Someone at another one of those business schools, frankly, the one that might be ranked number one undergrad right now, <laughs> call me and say, it's game, set, and match. The, the UCLA and in the city of Los Angeles, it's, it's, it, it's theirs to win in terms of a really holistic approach. Well, that's, one, that's a wonderful aspiration. I, I'm totally convinced we'll meet it. Uh, Martin, <laughs> what challenges do you see? Oh, Dean, how much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, um, you know, I think in the world of college athletics, um, if you look at the professional sports, college is usually a little behind when it comes to whether it's adapting technology, uh, whether it's rules, whether it's um, marketing, experiential um, opportunities for fans. Usually the pro is pro game is ahead of the college game. And now what you're seeing is this rapid change in college athletics. Um, it's very chaotic and frenzied because there's not a rule structure in place that is enforceable. There are rules within the NCAA, but there's a challenge when it comes to enforcing it. And if you operate in an environment where you know the penalty um, is worth the risk of, of stepping across the line, then that creates a perfect storm of, of chaos and people not doing things above board. That's not to erase the good things that are happening in college athletics. But when you talk about challenges, one of the challenges is we have a framework of college athletics that doesn't work. It just doesn't. It is, it is, it is antiquated. Um, there's been historically a void in leadership. And, and now when you see some of the things that are occurring, um, y- you know, the, the challenge is you've got um, a challenge with the model, right? Um, the model's gonna change. You're in a litigious environment. There's a lot of money in college athletics and everybody recognizes that. There's an awareness there. So right now there are about five court cases, for example, that are all um, attacking the model that is college athletics in the NCAA. Uh, And those will be decided in the next 12 to 18 months. So you might have a different model. Um, And then what we're trying to do always is educate our student athletes. So you're trying to educate them uh, about some of the things that they're having to deal with now. NIL, um, making money, being an independent contractor. If you make over $400, you've got to file taxes and different things that they that's what my parents did, right? I didn't do that. You know, I, I talked to our student athletes and some of them are v- well versed in those kind of things and some of them are not. So in this changing environment where you see the pro model, we're starting to adapt some of those concepts, but we don't have the infrastructure of the pro model. So therefore there's chaos. Um, but what you try to do is look at where you are, where you want to be, and how do you navigate to best position your program 
for whatever changes occur, you're ready. And that's what we do at UCLA. And that's, that's the, the strength in UCLA and, and wanting to be the best and be elite. We talk about that is, you know, what do we need to do to position ourselves in this changing environment to be able to take success to another level? And, you know, the value of education is always greatest in these moments when there's transformative change uh, happening in the world. And I know many of you are students, whether you're undergraduates or, or uh, MBA students, they'd love to hear your perspective, I'm sure, on the current uh, employment opportunities and entrepreneurial opportunities in sports. Andy, maybe you could talk about, uh, you know, the landscape for MBAs and perhaps you for undergraduate students, uh, Martin. Um, sure. Um, by the way, I, I, I do want to start by just saying it's a unique moment for us to be creating a program like this when you have an athletic director like Martin. I mean, you, when you think about it, you know, we can all, you know, there are all the sayings out there like stay in your lane or stick to your knitting, et cetera. When you have the platform that UCLA has, including 700 student athletes, and you have an AD who, and I'm not just saying this because I'm say, I'd say it behind his back, but people write about it that you know how you've taken this transformational approach to athletics, why we're in the Big Ten, how you engage at the NCAA level, the conference level at UCLA, and frankly, you know, a big benefit to us is his interest in engaging in this um, and, uh, and, and in the academic side of, of sports um, is maybe one of the most important ingredients we have right now. And so, you know, it's sort of like they say, strike when the iron's hot. Got Martin, so strike. But, um, and now we've got you too. Back to you, you got to wear the UCLA oh. pin now. I noticed that, man. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're part of I us now. I'm starting to feel a little. There we oh, go. There come we on. Go. Come on. Whoa. Let's go. Let's go. I'm I was waiting on. for that. Oh. While, you're while, while you're answering, now, I'll man. put it up. Hey, I'm, I'm usually the one in Nike giving out the swag, but I'll take the swag. <laughs> I, I need a new whole, whole new set of swag now. So um, the um, back to the career opportunities, I would say, and Martin touched on this a little bit, I think, and, and so did Dean Bernardo. It's a incredibly, sports is incredibly dynamic. It's massive, it's growing, and it's dynamic. It's not same old, same old traditional. And in fact, the future may be here, it may be visible, but it's very unevenly distributed. And so when you think about career opportunities, um, there are opportunities to get involved with something that's high growth. There are opportunities to get involved with something that's a turnaround or being disrupted and everything in between. And so I'll, I'll give you some examples um, it, it, and, it, and it really comes down to, in my opinion, I would say, look at sports, if you're thinking about a career in sports, first and foremost, through the lens that we all kind of figure out 20 years later, you start your career going, I got to make some money, I need a job, you know, I might need a brand on my resume, I got to build, and you do, that is important. At the same time, we all kind of get into that, and then you go like, huh. is there something <laughs> I'm trying to do in life that's even beyond just the paycheck, et cetera, and its impact. And I think the thing that is amazing to me about this opportunity in sports business is sports is one of the most inspiring, unifying things in the world. Like, you know, I want the Lakers to beat the Celtics all the time. <laughs> I don't hate Celtics, man. I'm, I'm not, you know, like <laughs> they, they give me something to, you know, to talk to them about. And I think just in, and it also unites diverse communities. If you think about think about how diverse Los Angeles is and how many UCLA fans there are in Los Angeles across all that diversity. And there, there are things that pol are polarizing and kind of drive wedges and gaps in terms of the community in Los Angeles. Sports is one of the things that brings it together. So I would say when you think about sports, I would start with how do you really want to have impact through sports? So that might be local. Yep. You might say, I want to work for a team. I want to work for, you know, the Clippers are building a new state. I want to, I want to engage this local community and rally them around a team. You might say, I want to solve something relative to collegiate athletics. And I want to work at a conference or the NCAA. Um, or I, I want to really have an inspirational impact on the world. So I'm going to get into the media side of sports or I, I think youth these days, you know, the average age viewership in media is, is it kind of goes up a, a, a year every year. So I joke that at Nike, we say the NBA is a pretty young league in terms of viewership. It's 42. The only reason that's young is because I'm 52. <laughs> but, you know, the NFL is 51, 52. But interactive games 
and the environments in interactive games that are that are being created. So you might say, I want to be part of connecting youth to sport because sport's so important in life, but youth aren't watching live sport. And so I think just think about that industry. And I would say the first lens is what kind of impact do you want to have? It's all good. You know, I mean, there's a ton of, of I'll talk about Real Salt Lake. When, when we invested in that, we just the vibe walking around the stadium, there's something that feels good about seeing families bringing their kids to an accessible price point in sports, the MLS or, or the NWSL. And at the same time, having worked at, at Disney, you know, ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, you went like, wow, ESPN really drives a lot of impact and inspiration through that kind of huge platform that it has. So again, maybe I'd just say start with the ecosystem and start with like, what, what are you drawn to and where do you think you can have impact? I mean, I'm going to call out someone in the back, Alexa, a student here. She's going to be embarrassed. Like, oh, not too embarrassed that I called her. She's like, no, I'm right here. I'm right here. You know, basically she works at Spring Hill and, and Maverick Carter, Alexa and the team decided we believe that athletes are more than an athlete. And they, they said athletes have a story to tell me on sports. They created an entertainment company around that principle. That's the impact they wanted to empower athletes. So long answer, but, <laughs> but, there, but it's because it's a massive industry and there's a lot of opportunity. I'm going to piggyback on what you said. I love, I love the part about impact. You know, where, if I'm an undergraduate, I'm thinking, where do, where do I want to have impact? Because to me, you have to have passion and impact to sustain you in whatever you do, because they're going to be tough times. And when they're tough times, what's going to help you keep going? What's going to give you that resiliency to see it through? And that's where the passion for what you're doing, who you're serving comes in. So, so looking at that, I like also what you said, I'm going to just steal everything you said, <laughs> is keeping the athlete here at the center. And what are all the things that impact the athlete? So when we talk about jobs specifically, um, I talked about how pro is ahead of the college game. Data analytics. You know, how do you use data? Pro uses data very well. They're in, a, they're in a format where some teams use it more, some coaches use it less, but it's there. College has not really um, deep dive, haven't had that deep dive into it. But that's really important because you're trying to understand your fan because the fan's uh, taste are changing as far as how they want to consume. Five years ago, all we thought about was season tickets. Now you're thinking about uh, a, a subscription model because everybody's used to Hulu, Netflix, and ESPN Plus and different things. So maybe I don't want the whole season, but maybe I want to be able to taste a little bit here and there. How do we still monetize that, but, but still serve the interest of all of our fans? So data analytics is one. If you're into that, um, I think that's a big opportunity, um, not just in college, but the whole sports ecosystem. And then how do you serve the athlete? Storytelling. You just talked about that. You know, that's a big one. I think communication is important. It's still blocking and tackling at the end of the day. You, you've got to be able to communicate and articulate a vision, a strategy. Um, but storytelling is really important because there's so much noise. And how do you get your brand or your, your program you're working for, your organization, sports organization, or that athlete, how do you get their story above the noise, especially here in LA. We talk about that, you know, so you have to stand out. You have to do things different. You've got to be able to connect with people on a different level. So I would say communication, storytelling, uh, data analytics, really important. Uh, and then performance. Every elite athlete is looking for an edge. They are always looking for an edge. If, if there's an edge to be gained and you want to be elite, you're going to try to get that. So that's strength and conditioning, that's sleep. You know, two months ago, I'd never heard of an aura ring. You know, my boss, Chancellor Block, I was in a meeting with him and I was like, what's that ring? And he showed me his, his phone and he showed me all his sleep statistics. And I was like, you know, my sleep needs to get much better because I've learned that sleep is at the core of all that we do. If you're not sleeping well, you're not performing to the best of your ability and I'm not sleeping well. So, so I got this and now I'm looking every day, oh, I got to get down earlier tonight. You know, it's informing me of how I can perform better. <laughs> but that's a prime example of, if everybody's an athlete, right? Everybody has a body, you know? So, so I, I would look at that too. So those are all kinds of areas that I would say five years ago weren't even that much on the radar in a lot of our, our um, ethos, but now it is. Well, two quick things. One, this idea that there is, that sports in and of itself isn't just like a playful hobby. Gene Block, 
his special his academic background is circadian, sleep. Yeah. circadian yeah. rhythms and sleep. <clears throat> And the idea that 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 is now such an uh, that's a topic relative to the Big Ten move, right? So Huge. I'd say that's why we're working with the the sleep specialists and doctors here at UCLA. We're yeah. partnering with them to get get that feedback too. So one other thing to the just to close the career point, um, one of the we're working on the foundational plan for this program, and and right now we're, we're and it was in some of the communications we made. The so you guys know as students, the students that are here. The mission around is around providing inspiration, education, and access to students that want to have impact through a career in sports. And, and what I would tell you is what we've spent some time on and we spent some time this morning talking about is how to make this a platform where alumni, people in the community, there's a give, get, and a belonging that makes that access really organic and dynamic as compared to maybe what we'll also do, which is try to get people to come recruit through the Parker Center. But that's, that's something with the program we're saying, you know, there's so much here in L.A. If we can make this program have something kind of for everybody, um, that can be a much more organic way to start to open up those pathways and access into the business of sports. Well, uh, one thing you both spoke about I want to elaborate a little bit on is uh, the social impact. Um, and... Um, you know, many of you who are familiar with our strategic plan also understand that, you know, one of the core capabilities we're trying to develop in students is, is to be driven and, and purposeful. And in my 30 years at Anderson, I, I would say the biggest change I've seen among students is just how important it is that students today uh, pursue careers of purpose. Um, not that, you know, this wasn't a consideration 30 years ago, but it's a really a prime consideration today. And, uh, you know, one of the one of the things we thought about when um, we were uh, thinking of developing this program is just the incredibly unique situation we were in to, to partner with UCLA Athletics. If you think about uh, the iconic coaches and athletes and and the social impact that they've had, you know, we're, we're talking about a school with uh, uh, student athletes that include, uh, well, you can go on and Jackie on and on, Jackie, Jackie Robinson, Jackie, Jackie Robinson. Joyner Kersey, Ann Myers Drysdale, Arthur Ashe. And on and on, you can go, you can spend the whole, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and on and on and on. People who um, uh, transcended uh, the sports that they were in. We thought that was really a critical part of the brand because it was so consistent with what we want to develop in, uh, in terms of the qualities of the leaders that come out of Anderson. So the partnership was extremely important. And Martin, you know, it's hard to get partnerships done uh, at UCLA. <laughs> and, you know, universities are very siloed. It's hard to get these things done. I found, you know, and we found working with you extraordinarily, uh, you know, um, successful and, 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 and productive. Um, how do you see athletics role in, you know, this uh, partnership and how do you see it benefiting our students, our student athletes, not just while they're here, but beyond? Well, I feel the same way. Just, you know, Anderson School of Management, the partnership that we've been on this journey um, has been tremendous. And, and I have to give credit to Andy. Um, Andy is a treasure, you know, for him to be a UCLA grad and Shelby being a UCLA grad, you know, this was his vision to really make impact. You know, he didn't have to do this. You know, he's got, he's got big jobs and big dreams and big goals. And, and I've just been so impressed with his vision for wanting to have a greater impact that affects UCLA students. It's about students to him. And for me, as an athletic director who serves 700 student athletes every day, I love this because you need investment, you need people to care. So I wanna, I wanna give this guy a round of applause <laughs> right now because none of this is possible without him. So to the question of how do, how do I see uh, athletics and student athletes and Anderson School of Management students, this is a game changer. You know, this is a game, this is a blank canvas. And what we know is we know the powerful impact of sports and entertainment on the lives of countless people. I mean, this is a, this is a probably what, $1 trillion plus industry. And so this is a blank canvas. And I know the people that have already engaged with us, have reached out to us. When this was announced, we had people all over the, not even the country, the world reaching out saying, I want to be a part of Anderson. I want to be a part of UCLA athletics. Like this is phenomenal. And so what we'll be able to do with the classes, with the programming, 
Um, it's not just in a classroom. To me, this is, this is a learning, a virtuous learning cycle that'll be throughout the year. And, the, and one of the things that I love about this, and, and Andy's a product of this, is we talk about in athletics, how do we tap into our rich alumni, fans, supporters, people that love those four letters? How do we tap into that to help our students, you know, to make those connections? This is a prime example. This is a prime way we're going to do that. We have so many contacts, so many people, even if they're not a Bruin, that want to be involved. And, and what I see, what Andy has shared is making it so impactful um, of, across the board for faculty, for students, for student athletes, um, that if you're a student here, or if you're faculty, or if you're someone that wants to be associated with UCLA, this is going to be a phenomenal way. So I'm excited. Um, I can't tell you the, the X, Y, but I know Z is going to be a huge outcome of impact. And that's what, that's what we've talked about is impact. How do we have impact, impact, impact? And it's going to be very impactful for all students. Can you give us a glimpse? I, I, I know your uh, phone, your phones are sort of, you're getting texts, your <laughs> LinkedIn's are being overwhelmed. Industry engagement is going to be, and, and partnerships is going to, going to be a really key aspect of this program. Can you give us a hint or a preview of perhaps individual you athletes, first, teams, yeah. brands yeah. who want to be associated and are going to be part of this? Um, it has been, um, and I see Pat back there in communications, and a lot of this is due to um, some really strategic communications on her part, realizing that there'll be a lot of people that want to engage. And so get the word out. And um, I guess, I don't know, in, in sports and entertainment, people name drop, so I'll name them. <laughs> uh, so that's just what it is, right? Just get used to it. So um, one, I'm going to start with something which is actually pretty amazing. Most of you may not even realize how many notable people in the industry of sports already teach here. Jeff Morad, for example, Peter Guber, et cetera. So a number of people have reached out and said, let's do this, basically. LFG, basically, like, <laughs> we're here, we're glad you're here. Um, but it's ranged from the Olympic water polo coach, Adam Krikorian, Baron Davis wants to meet and get involved, Brian Cornell, the um, CEO of Target, an alum uh, of UCLA, um, certainly tons of colleagues that I've engaged with. Faculty at other universities. Faculty, yeah, you're right. Actually, I had a professor at North Carolina, uh, Wharton at Penn, an, uh, a guy who wrote a book at NYU um, on basketball and how, how basketball can save the world. A bunch of people reach out because they kind of realized, wow, this could be something pretty impactful. Um, and um, But what I'd say is really what's been also pretty fascinating is I'm – well, I, I didn't know high school kids were on LinkedIn, but I'm getting LinkedIn direct <laughs> messages from high school kids. Like, I want to get into the business of sports. I'm a senior. I applied, fingers crossed, et cetera. But, but, you know, back to Martin's point, I think the thing that's been really fun to see, oh, by the way, I should say, everyone in the private equity and venture capital world of sports, not, not to a person, obviously, but tons of people saying, hey, we are trying to figure out our investment thesis in this space. Let's, we, want, we want to belong or give get with this program. But I would say back to the inspiration for me is, I mean, I think, I think my personal opinion is the world exists in its most sublime state on a college campus. It's like learning sports, diversity, um, amazing faculty, et cetera. And the fact that all these people want to get involved in helping the students. And so the thing that's been really amazing is how many students, student athletes, got a water polo player who just graduated over here, wants to get involved. Um, uh, undergraduates who aren't in sports, but they're passionate about it and the high school students. It's been um, Put it this way, we are thinking about how we create scalable ways to engage with everyone because most people say, you've all probably done this, I've done this over my career, like, can we get coffee? Can I set up a Zoom? And you go like 24 hours times seven days, <laughs> you know, like 2026. 20, but so we're trying to create kind of scalable ways to engage with 15, 30 people at a time. It's been it's been pretty off the charts. I mean, I'll even the folks that 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 you know Martin leads. Chip Kelly, Adam Ray, Corey on the basketball side Nick. have all reached out and want to get involved. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, this is why we thought we could do it better than anybody else. <laughs> um, so, Andy, you're uh, 
preparing now to teach your first class in the program in the spring. And I, I want to be I, in the first class. I want to, I want to be in his first class. I want to hear you, man. And, and, <laughs> so, and, and I think you're a part of it too. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, that course and perhaps some of the other things that are coming down the road. Yeah. So Tony talked about how, um, I shifted from Dean Bernardo. I'm now. No, it's just Tony's fine. Tony, yeah, look yeah, at him. He's yeah, comfortable yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, He's part of it. I prefer Antonio, actually. But. He's got the pin on now. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, we'll work with, you know, I've, worked, I've, I've spent a lot of time around branding. So we, we're, we're working with this notion of kind of like a fours up, four pillars uh, strategic priorities. One, a specialization at the MBA level, as Tony talked about. Two, a minor. Three, research and publishing and, and being a thought leader in the industry. And four, community engagement. So really broadly defined, I've talked about that. In the first two, um, in a specialization, I've learned that a specialization is uh, four courses comprise a specialization. And typically there's one required course in that. In a minor, I think it's seven to nine courses at the undergraduate level, maybe six to nine. Um, and there's typically a required course um, in, in, or a, you know, a 101. So what Sanjay um, is up here in his UCLA Jordan gear as well. And uh, I like that I shirt. Remember. You have Jordan <laughs> ones on, I think, right? Yeah. You got some Jordan ones on. The, uh, um, he has been teaching me how to create a syllabus for uh, a course. And we have just applied now for approval for the first course. We're going to try to get some quick early wins. I can hopefully I can say this. Our hope is that we get approval to teach an MBA level course and an undergraduate course in spring and get rolling on this right out of the gate. That course right now is tentatively titled the global ecosystem of sport. It will take segments of that industry I spoke about and really hit each segment through the disciplinary lenses of strategy and economics. Think business models. What have they been historically? How are they evolving? How are they being disrupted? What are some of the hot topics? And then come from a, you know almost like a different angle, a matrix of, of other discipline, other subject areas within leadership and management that you could learn through the lens of sports. A great example would be coaching, teamwork, leadership. Think of those intangibles. I'll tell you, having been at Nike and Disney, what do we do all the time? We get in coaches athletes, you know, we get people to come in and go, how, military, how do you do it? How do you inspire a team? How do you lead a team? How do you get the team to work together and focus on the name on the front of the jersey, not the back? And, and I think sports is such an amazing way to teach that in a business school that, that is, is building transformational leaders, ultimately. I mean, there's the skill sets, we, you know, we all have to be able to, not all, but, you know, you got you to gotta be able to mess around a little bit in Excel and create, create a valuation model. But, you know, as you, as, as you really think about having impact, it's that how do, you, how do you get a team inspired and working together? And, you know, when a team wins a championship, there's plenty of spoils to go around. So the name on the front of the jersey is what it's all about. And that's how we're thinking about the class. So you asked earlier about how do we see the benefit for yeah. students? Listen to how he just described the first class. Listen to that passion. And that in business, economics, champions, leadership, all of that. I mean, that's just like one class. Like <laughs> that's, that's why this will be successful because the people around you um, and this program are gonna, I mean, I'm just excited. Hopefully we have some room for some student athletes. For me to yeah. come in the first class. Well, tell us a little bit about that. You know, what you're hearing from the student athletes and, and you know, the, the, the excitement perhaps uh, around having these kinds of offerings. Yeah, I think traditionally, um, it, I was a former student athlete. I, I never thought about the business of sports. And I think now more student athletes are thinking about the different areas of sports that they could be involved in. You're more than an athlete. We talked about that earlier, right? Um, th there's so many opportunities and I don't think people quite understand just how many opportunities there are in the sports industry. So I think there's a, there's a, there's a, um, a curiosity from our student athletes. There's an interest to learn about what are some of these areas that I could be involved in. Uh, so, so that's why I'm so excited about it because we're starting quick, we're starting fast, um, and we we have input from people we're serving as far as like what what do you want to know? Like NIL, that's obviously a big deal in the college athletic space. Contracts, you know, mm -hmm. taxes, business, mm -hmm. um, brand. 
brand strategy. How do you how do you sell? How do you associate yourself with the things that that are a plus and not a minus? You know, these are the things that actually impact student athletes, but there's not always the, the proper course or training to help in that. Right. And so that's why I'm excited about it. And that's what I hear student athletes as far as just the different areas of sports that they could pursue for a job or a career. Great. Well, I also wanted to ask uh, some questions that were provided by students. We asked some uh, students and those of you who are participating here today to uh, give us some questions for their for our panelists. And uh, I have a, a, a few here, if you don't mind. Um, uh, one of the questions uh, is around major opportunities uh, that are in, in, in L.A. in the next five years. And of course, Perhaps one of the biggest is the Summer Olympics and Paralympic Games that are coming to Los Angeles. And Andy, you serve on the board of LA 2028. LA 28. What specific opportunities do you see for uh, the program and our students to engage with uh, uh, LA 2028 before and perhaps during the Olympics? Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on that in a sec, but I, in the name dropping, I left off one important name. So on Monday morning, at about 8:30, my I I saw a phone on I saw someone calling on my phone. It was Bill Walton. And, um, <laughs> by the way, if you ever get a call from Bill Walton, it's funny because he starts by going like, "This is Bill Walton. I'm a, bas I'm a former basketball player. Like, I know it. I'm like you're actually in my contact. Like, I've met you before." But he has that voice, and he goes through, you know. And I spent some time in beautiful Oregon and etc. But he wants to get involved. And back to the elite status, he there's a guy Andy Hill who played with him who wants to get involved. And he goes, you know, he won three national championships as a basketball player. He goes, you know how many people have ever done that and what schools they went to? And it was, it was, it was a fun conversation. But back to L.A. So um, it's, it's also not a coincidence that the timing relative to this is now. It's actually not a coincidence that when we did the Jordan deal with UCLA, we said, we want this to run through 2028. Right. And Martin was like, well, I might want to renegotiate prior to that, but okay, <laughs> right. I'll sign it up for now. But, um, but uh, you know, we'll get started. We'll get rolling. We'll see get a little early look in. And then he made some <laughs> Final Fours and, and whatnot. But, um, but, uh, but it's such a huge moment for the city of L.A. Casey Wasserman, one of the, you know, he's probably in the pantheon of people who have given back to and supported UCLA. Um, and certainly UCLA athletics, I'm sure Huge. academics as well. But um, but he loves LA, and you know he wanted LA to come to LA for LA. Um, he uh, and and so when you think about that, what he really wants to do is impact UCLA, also USC, youth in LA. There's 160 million dollars out of the roughly seven billion dollar budget that has been designated to create as broad and um, uh, free access to youth uh, to sports for youth in Los Angeles. So he really wants to impact LA. Now, another way that he will impact LA and that team will impact LA is, and there's a good and a bad here, that organization has to ramp up to tens of thousands of people working on the Olympics, kind of starting now. I mean, the, mm -hmm. you know, in the board meetings that we're starting to talk about and stay tuned for this, the kind of cool handoff type moments that'll happen this summer. I think, you know, it's, you've seen that when you've watched the Olympics, it's like the games are ending in Paris and you start to, the cameras start to shift to, let's just say the beaches of LA or something <laughs> like that. But, but um, to tease it a little bit. Um, and so that's now, in fact, that organization starting to get like the same level of maybe more of anxiety that I have <laughs> teaching my first class. They're like, <laughs> oh, we have to do this. <laughs> it's like, it's not a strategy anymore. Now they have to ramp up and so they need people. Now what they also, what's interesting is as some of you are undergraduates and business school students thinking about how do you start your career? This is the negative part. All those people get fired in the summer of 2028. <laughs> <laughs> so they actually really need to hire a lot of people and get the job done. And then they're plenty you know, happy for you to be using that as your entree into the world of sports. I think it's a massive opportunity. I know that Tony and Sanjay and team have met with the folks at LA 28. I know there's even some discussion about partnering with our crosstown rival in that regard, but, but LA 28 actually needs UCLA, not just for the Olympic Village, which is going to be here at 
I think that's still the case, and um, and some of the events, but needs the people and the students and and the people of LA to to work as part of the Olympics. Martin, uh, thanks, Andy. Martin, a question for you was: What's been the biggest change in your current role that you didn't see coming five years ago? Mm, that's a good one. Just, just this morning. Just this morning, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you say just this morning. I would say I would say nil. You know, collectives. Um, this morning, I had a meeting with the official partner of UCLA Athletics, the Men of Westwood Collective, and talking about the strategy and what we're trying to do and, and how we need to go about it. And, um, and that was a two hour meeting. You know, I didn't see that five years ago. Again, that was not something that was on the radar five years ago. And now that, that took up a lot of my morning and a lot of my bandwidth as far as how do we continue to position UCLA Athletics and our student athletes and how do we get them more resources um, that was not on, that was not, that wasn't even talked about five years ago. So, um, that's the one when you said this morning, you know, that's, that's an easy one. Um, NIL, uh, that's, that's been a, a big game changer. It's been positive. I've been on the record. I think NIL is awesome. I think it's great it's, it was long overdue. Um, and 98% of it is, is tried and true and it's right. Um, and so you can't, you got to make sure that the 2% doesn't, doesn't, um, over, you know, doesn't take over the 98% that's really good about it. And so um, that's, that's probably the biggest change. And, uh, and I would say too, in college athletics, you don't know what's coming next. You know, you always have to be nimble and flexible. Uh, that's what I try to, try to tell our colleagues that um, we just gotta be ready and prepared for whatever comes. You know, I, I read a great book, and you didn't ask me this, I can't believe, I'm, I'm like going all kinds of ways, sorry. There's a great book called Same As Ever by Morgan Hansel, and he, he talks about how um, there are things that have always occurred in the past that will not change, you know? And when people are motivated by power, greed, um, different things, that doesn't change no matter what. And so, um, the more things change, the more they stay the same, I guess, is what is what I kind of think about. You still want to serve. We still educate. We still want to develop. That's the core of what we do. And you've got to always keep that at the center. And it just may look different. It might go in different approaches. But but that's what you've got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Yeah, I, I actually think there's some kind of live ammo here on on just what this kind of a program could help address. Um, you know, Martin has been in the center of conference realignment, NCAA, NIL. And a couple things to think about, just again, sort of, you know, live discussion on business. College football has more total viewership than the NFL. And yet college football rights are roughly three to four billion in total revenue. The NFL's is 15 billion plus. So right there, you'd say, well, I got more people watching. How come I got one fifth of revenue? On the flip side of it, players, amateurism, don't get paid. They do get value out of the education. Sports, professional sports, deals with salary caps, et cetera. And what, when I look at, at college athletics, I start with the demand is extraordinary. People care about it and, are, and care about it to some extent, maybe even more than some of the pro leagues. So I look at it as a growth opportunity. I look at it as these changing dynamics, to your point, like um, same as ever, where there is growth and opportunity, people are going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I see you, see, you see there's a ton of revenue opportunity there. There's a ton of opportunity in terms of getting the, 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 the people who fuel it more engaged, not just academically, but, but economically. And, and I think why this program, I think, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, you think of those careers where you go, you're going to have a job for life, right? If you're like a tax attorney, you probably, you're probably good. Um, but in this space, solving for par competitiveness, parity, um, equity, et cetera, in that dynamic, even the pro leagues haven't figured that out. The NFL might have figured it out a little better than, and the NBA, mm -hmm. a little better than hockey or baseball, et cetera. You know, the women's soccer league is trying to work it out. I, I think college athletics is probably one of the most, is going to be one of the most dynamic aspects of the, e the business ecosystem of sports. Totally agree. Totally agree. If you think like, in a way, amateurism has maintained some level of parity. 
once you, to your point on dynamics, once you throw NIL into the mix, it's not amateurism anymore. And now you go, well, you know, those leagues have had to solve some pretty complicated dynamics across all of their stakeholders. Absolutely. That was a good question. <clears throat> well, thank you. We have time just for some cl closing thoughts. Both of you um, could, can, you know, do a lot and can be doing a lot of different things. The opportunities that are available to you are immense. And yet you were both catalysts for this program, you know, among the universe of things that you could have been doing. Why this? First and foremost, I just think this is an exceptional opportunity for our student athletes. You know, I think learning more about the business of sports and the industry and how this impacts them and how they can have impact after the ball stops. I think this is an incredible opportunity. So uh, again, I can't thank both of you enough um, and Anderson School of Management for providing this opportunity to serve students in an extraordinary way. So uh, that, was, that was my passion for getting involved. And, um, but then thinking bigger, right? Not just our student athletes, but just how we can leverage UCLA, those four letters are known worldwide. Why can't we be the best? We can be the best. We can be the best. And so we can serve more people, not just our student athletes, but students, but the community in LA and everything that's going on. I mean, you talk about LA 28, we're going to the Big Ten Conference. There, there's so much good and positive right here. And so we should tap into that and make this be a vehicle to serve in an extraordinary way. So I'm, I'm thankful for the partnership and I'm, I'm excited for what's to come. Yeah, I'll just say two things. One, um, impact on others and because I wanna do what you guys do. So <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, when I think about it, like the most fulfilling thing for me at Nike over 17 years has been that the value we created as a team um, had such a positive impact on tens of thousands of people who work at Nike and their families. Think like they're working at Nike and you go, if we, if this company grows and, 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 and we distribute the spoils of the success that we have, you know, I, I'll have friends who might be at a different level in the company and they're like, my kid's college, check, got it. And there's that kind and so I've had to look at that and say, okay, that's, that's where I feel like there's impact beyond just business performance. You guys have chosen a career and many of you in here where your entire career has been about developing young adults from day one. It's a job too. I mean, everybody should have some, <laughs> some, some personal reward out of it. But um, I honestly looked at the opportunity as, as just, it's something like grass is greener. I, I look at the Tonys, the Martins, the Chip Kellys, the Corys, et cetera, and I go, you know, they, if someone says, what kind of impact do you have? They go, I'm basically helping young adults, you know, become, you know, the best version of themselves or realize their full potential. And, and to me, like joining you guys, learning from you guys in terms of how you do that and being a part of it, um, was just the next level of impact. In fact, um, I don't know, maybe if I would have found it 28 years ago, I would have done this instead, but, um, no, we're regrets. glad you did what you did. <laughs> <laughs> no regrets, but I, I, I really mean that. And it's not just, it's not just being nice because you guys are sitting here. I think, um, I, I meant it when I said it, I think college campuses are, you know, where the world exists and it's most sublime state. I, I can't think of, of anywhere else where kind of everything that this institution does um, is focused on having an impact on the next generation. So I'm, I feel fortunate to be a part of it. Well, I want to thank you both on behalf of everyone. I also want to thank you personally. You know, uh, the enthusiasm and commitment you brought to this has like buoyed me. You know, it's oh, like, it's cool. you know, it, yeah. it's a slog sometimes. And, <laughs> and Martin knows this really well. Uh, and sometimes, uh, yeah. you know, being around people who have that passion and who want to make a difference yep. and being a part of that. Thanks for dragging me along. It's been, it's been wonderful. <laughs> uh, and I've been, I'm really looking forward to what we can do together. I, uh, I, I think uh, we're going to reach heights that uh, we, we don't imagine. So, uh, thank all you. of us together. All yep. of us together. I want to thank my teammates too in here, Jessica. I think Rick Coy is over there, and, and Kenny Donaldson. Thanks for being here too. Yeah. And I, I, I want to thank Sanjay, who's sitting here quietly. But uh, Sanjay, stand up. Yeah, man. Sanjay Sood, who stand up, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> San, Sanjay makes everything go. And uh, th thanks, Sanjay. Thank you all. We're going to have lots of opportunities in the coming years to get together. Um, and so looking forward to seeing you all. Thanks again.